welcome you all here to um, Council Bluffs for the uh, press conference for the World Team Trials, which are going to be held for the second straight year at the Mid-America Center here in Council Bluffs, June 11 and 12. It's Friday and Saturday. Uh, we're going to have the top Olympic wrestlers in all three Olympic styles competing in their most important domestic event of the year, which is the uh, uh, qualifier for the World Championships, which is going to be held uh, this year in Moscow, Russia in September. And uh, it's um, clearly the event that these guys train for all year. And uh, if they win this competition, not only do they get to compete in the World Championships, but they also are able to um, uh, get the number one funding for the United States and be part of our national team. We're going to have uh, three athletes, as well as uh, a, a, a local coach who's been involved with the wrestling here and, and helped uh, organize the competition of the last two years that we've been here at, at Council Bluffs. Um, and uh, our third athlete will be joining us when he gets here. We thought we'd get started and uh, give you an opportunity to uh, uh, start working on the interviews and things. Um, the format for this uh, will be the same as what we did last year, if any of you were here. I'm going to ask a couple of questions to each of our, uh, our participants, and then we will we'll open it up for questions. Uh, and at the end, we'll have a mill around time where you can do one-on-ones and uh, speak to the athletes and coaches that are here. Uh, kind of uh, the theme I'd like to talk about is that uh, it, this is going to be very similar it's, uh, to last year, but there's a whole lot of differences as well. Uh, certainly, we're at the same venue, the Mid-America Center. We have um, the, the same things are at stake as the World Team Trials last year. Uh, we're again hosted by the, the Council Bluffs Co Convention and Visitors Bureau, who have been great hosts for this event. We have the same format, a two-day tournament, where half the weight classes compete the first day, which is Friday. The other half compete on Saturday. They're one-day competitions, so the winner, you win, you win that day and you win the competition. You only wrestle for one day. All that is the same. <coughs> However, in many respects, there's a lot of differences as well, not only for the athletes we have here, but uh, of course, uh, just uh, all of the different competitions have different players and different positions, and it's going to be a, it's going to be quite uh, different for the for for the athletes here based on what they've been doing in their competition. Um, I'd like to first introduce our two local stars who uh, were state champions, competing here at uh, Lewis Central High School, and went on to be stars at Iowa State. Trent and Travis Paulson. In case you don't know who is who, I'm going to ask them to identify themselves. <laughs> we'll start with we'll start with Trent and Travis. Okay. Yeah, I'm Trent. I got the shaved head, so it should be easy to tell. Yeah, that makes me Travis. <laughs> now, uh, last year uh, when we came to Council Bluffs, Trent was at 66 kilograms and, Tr and Travis was at 74 kilograms, and both of them were U.S. Open champions, so they entered this competition as the number one wrestlers in their weight class. Um, they were training in Lincoln, Nebraska at the time as well. <coughs> now this year, the athletes are now training in Ames, Iowa and in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center. They're both competing at the same weight class, which is 74 kilograms. And neither one of them are entering this tournament sitting in the number one spot and in the finals already they're, they're because they play second and third at our national championships in Cleveland a, a few months ago in early April. So um, I'm going to ask Trent first. Um, Trent, could you explain your decision to uh, move up in weight and uh, leave 66 and, and go to the weight the brothers in? Uh, yeah, uh, cutting to 66 was kind of an 08 thing. I did it for the Olympic year. And then following into uh, 09, there was a couple of tournaments where they were only bringing the number one and number two guys, and I only qualified for that ranking at that weight. So I ended up cutting it a couple more times in 09 and stayed down there. But as the year went on, it got tougher and tougher to me to wake, make the weight class. Even with meeting all the uh, special nutritionists and getting on specific diets. Uh, so pretty much once that became hard and almost a health issue, I decided to go up. Now, Travis, uh, you and Trent have not competed in matches, competitions before. I mean, how do you feel about the possibility that both of you guys wrestle well on Friday, you will wrestle each other for the first time in a major tournament? Yeah, like I said, at this tournament, everybody's tough, so I'm going to take one match at a time. But when, if I do end up meeting with Trent, 
I mean, I've watched film on everybody in that, that I could possibly wrestle. The only one I have is Trent because we've been wrestling ever since we could walk. I know what he's going to do. He knows what I'm going to do. It's just going to come down to who's better that day. I mean, you watch us in the rooms on a daily basis. I'm beating him or he's beating me. So we're just going <coughs> to lay it all out on the line. And then no hard feelings after. We just, whoever wins, we're going to support them to make the team. And whoever wins between us wants the medal come out at the World Championships. Trent, same question. Uh, any thoughts about the possibility of wrestling your brother here Friday? Yeah, I think it's very possible. And um, it's I can't necessarily just view it like any other match because it really isn't. We've uh, wrestled each other all, all our life and just going in just Pretty much, we know whatever we, what each other's going to do before the other one's even thinking it. So it becomes pretty strategical, and it's just, it's just it's a hard match to really think about in comparison to other matches. So I'm just gonna. I think we're just gonna go out there and battle and see what happens. How much smack talk has there been though between you guys? Because I know you guys like to give each other a hard time about that. There's been quite a bit. <laughs> just joking around, but we try to get our friends up against each other who they're going to shoot each other for. Yeah, like uh, last Sunday, Trent asked me if I wanted to go to church, but I had to go to my girlfriend's uh, a family meal, and I missed it, and he texted me, and he's like, well, that's the edge for me to win on Sunday. Or Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I got God on my side. <laughs> now, I, I'm, I'm going to ask both of you this one as well. Last year, you both sat out. You were in the final series, two out of three. Now you're going to have to wrestle in a challenge tournament to earn the right. Uh, to face the uh, national champion Andrew Howe. It, is it a different approach for you, uh, not having the, uh, the, well, I don't know if it's an advantage or not, of, of not uh, uh, having to wrestle at the beginning of the day? I think last year for me it was a big advantage because I cut, cut a ton of weight and it allowed me more time to recover and get big before those finals. But being up at 74, I, I don't really think it's an advantage for me because I get stronger throughout the day. I'm not cutting any weight. I'll be ready first round. and. I'll be feeding off each, each match while he's just sitting out. He's not gonna, he's not gonna be as prepared as I am. I feel. Travis, as far as uh, sitting out, does I actually, I'm, I'm the same way. I like going and wrestling. Last year, I didn't really like sitting out. I felt kind of sluggish watching all day, and then, and then wrestling those finals. I, I like to go and get a good blow and get those matches battle, and then you're comfortable with the environment. You've got your blow in your lungs. You just feel great. I think I'll get stronger each match, and I'm, ex I'm I, I feel like I'm more hungry this year going in. Uh, just one last question. Um, tell us about the change in training. Uh, you guys went back to Iowa State where you went to college to train. You were also spending quite a bit of time as residents at the Olympic Training Center. Has that worked out for you as far as uh, getting you prepared and improving as wrestlers? Travis? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's been the best of both worlds. We wanted to get back with Jackson because I think he's one of the best freestyle coaches in the nation. Past Olympic and national team coach. So we went with the past Olympic coach and with the current one, Zeke Jones, national team coach. <coughs> I'm bonded real well with Brandon Slay. He was the Olympic champ at my weight back in 2000. We have similar body styles, and his technique works real well with mine. So that's been a great, huge asset to me this year. So working with him, coming back and forth, and the only difference between last year, I'd say a little more <coughs> travel, but I feel like we've made it work and used it to our advantage. Any thoughts about training? Yeah kind of mimicking what he said, best of both worlds. Also, we loved our time at Nebraska. Manny did everything and be odd for us, but when we had an opportunity to go home where we had went to school for five years and had it just kind of had the home feeling, it's, we, we had to take that opportunity and then be able to split that time with the OTC. I mean, what more could you really ask for? Does anyone have any questions at this point for, for either Travis or Trent? I have a question for Chris. Who you got, me or Travis? Not Guys, <laughs> 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 what were your uh, your matchups like when you were growing up? Uh, I've read that those were pretty could get pretty brutal sometimes. I think that's one reason my mom wouldn't let us wrestle. I mean, it was always when we were a little flipping a coin because in practice we'd almost hurt each other because we're so competitive and we'd get so mad just giving up a takedown. It was almost like he'd rather break his arm than give up a takedown than get in a bad spot something like that and we've always been a big support to us <coughs> to each other so it's been it's been uh, good that we haven't competed but we're, we're older and mature now and we understand that we both have the same goal and this is the best weight class for both of us at the current time so it should work out.
Yeah, and we were having matches way before we even entered wrestling. From the time we could walk, we were wrestling on the carpets, putting holes in the drywall, just going after each other nonstop. My parents would sometimes make the mistake of leaving us in the house alone while they went out to do the horse chores. And it was just Royal Rumble from there on out. Not out. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys both learn from seeing how in the uh, U.S. Open? Um, how was kind of overlooked. It was a mistake on our part. He was overlooked. He didn't do well at the previous U.S. Open or the World Team Trials, so I didn't really view him as a threat. Obviously, I was kind of shocked when he upset Travis in the semifinals, but that mistake definitely won't be made again. We, uh, we've studied the film. We had a chance to work out with them when we were training at the Olympic Training Center, and I have no doubt in my mind that I'm ready for Andrew Howe. I hope he is, too. Yeah, same with me. I think I made the same mistake. I kind of overlooked him, but I've watched the film. I've uh, picked up my, my cardio, don't, doing extra sprints, trying to have been hand fighting a lot harder after practice, doing uh, little things to get ready for him because we, obviously he's the one sitting out one of us. Someone will face him. So uh, just more of a focus on him. I was more thinking, I, I had my mindset on Trent going to Nationals and like I, like I said earlier, one match at a time and uh, I just feel like I'm more prepared. I got with uh, I have really good workout partners at Iowa State, Chris Bangler, John Reeder, they were wrestling like him, our left hand collar tie, fighting real hard, hard pace, and we're just doing the right things when we're ready. Travis, obviously the, the trial finals last year were pretty frustrating for you. I mean, what do you feel like has changed in your game since then? My main focus this year has just been getting my offense off, working on series and moves and scoring points. After going four clinches last year in the trials finals, I've wrestled, I think, 25 or 26 matches this year, and I've only went to the clinch two times, and some of those are three periods of match, so huge improvement from last year. Just, I think my mindset is just no clinch, go out and score points, make it exciting for the fans, and I've just been really working on that. Guys, there's also a bit of an X factor. Not sure if he's going to be entered or not, but Ben Askren, the Olympian in 2008, uh, has, you know, he's qualified as former Olympian and have you guys given any thought about him? I mean, you've, one of you have wrestled him at Sunkist. I'm not sure which one off the top of my head, but uh, as far as him adding depth to the weight class, it's not just Andrew Howe. It's a guy like that who, and Mike Poeta, as a matter of fact, the weight's deep. Yeah. What about the rest of the weight class? Not just Howe and you guys, but what I else? I like having Askren in the weight class. One, I think he's good for the sport just because he's a character. Throw his hands up, <laughs> hands up, try to raise the roof before a match. He smiles and laughs at you when you're walking out there. It's just good. I, I like wrestling him personally because He's not a guy that's going to go stand out there and block and try to keep it, go to the clinch or have it be a one-point match. He'll go out and try to score points. It's going to be an exciting match. So personally, I love wrestling him. I think it's good to have him in there. I mean, the tougher the weight class is, the best guy getting through to represent the World Championships, that's what we need. That's how every weight class should be. Guys coming back. And uh, I've, I've obviously watched film on him. and I've wrestled him four times. and. Currently we're two and two, so if we wrestle again, this will be a tiebreaker. And I'm excited at the opportunity to wrestle him again. I know he's fighting too, and uh, that's that's hard to juggle fighting, wrestling, doing all that. I'm 100% focused on wrestling, freestyle wrestling, and doing that every day. So I'm excited for the opportunity. Any other questions? Um, yeah. I might have been wrong. Allergic reaction is that. Uh, I had an allergic so reaction allergic. after the weight cut last year. I got extremely dehydrated. When I jumped from the sauna into the pool, I broke out and uh, hives, and I couldn't explain it, but I've got that under control now. So you've been dealing with it? Because from what I understand, this is just information passed to me. You've been kind of battling it through your whole, I guess, training? Uh, it hasn't really been an issue since that way. in well, for a while, every time you worked out, you break out. High yeah, that's how they diagnosed it. But he got on medication, and now it's taken care of. But yeah, he was battling with it for a few months. Okay, and explain it to me again. I'm sorry. What happened? Um, I had a big weight cut for last year's trials, and uh, I got pretty dehydrated. And after I got out of the sauna, I was uh, pretty hot, so I jumped in the pool. And it was half indoor, half outdoor, and there were some leaves. And I don't know how sanitary the water was, and I just had an allergic reaction when I jumped in the pool. And I didn't know why, and then pretty much I just got some allergic or allergy medicine and went away. Okay. You know, I have one question on their dad, and uh, obviously <laughs> I'm very concerned uh, about what they're doing through the week. 
and their mother visits with them quite often, and I'll say, how's the boys doing? And she said, you know, I talked to Trent the other night, and they had these simulated matches. And uh, Marianne said, uh, well, Trent said he just did awesome in there. He, he wrestled all five matches. He said he kind of dominated, and he said that included his brother. <laughs> and so a little later on, why, uh, she talked to Travis. She said, Travis, how are you doing in those matches? Travis said, oh, I'm doing great. She said, nobody scored on me all day. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, you know, you talk about that smack. <laughs> we're trying to figure out who's got the upper hand here. I'm sure fight. they're going to take wrestling one another if that occasion arises uh, a lot better than we will. Which one would you root for? <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> okay, well, we'll finish up on our conversation here. I actually like to introduce Keith Massey, who's to my right, who coached uh, the Paulsons as youth and in high school here. Council Bluffs, who's also uh, one of the leaders of our organizing committee. And I just wanted to ask Keith, first of all, I mean, what, what do you think was the reason these guys have become so successful, not only as wrestle, wrestlers, but also as people? Uh, competitiveness, ever since I started working with them when I was about 9 or 10, the competitiveness between the two of them was to the point to where, and, and talking smack, you know, I used to take it personally because they would they're just chipping at each other nonstop. It's like, shut up and do the move. And they're just like, bless, baby. And it's constant, nonstop, back and forth. And, and a couple times I had to just count to ten, walk away, get out of the building, come back. But, uh, the, the, you know, and after a couple of years, I was like, okay, it's, it's not disrespect towards me or anything else. It was just their competitiveness on everything they did, of whether it's I can throw more bales of hay on in a shorter amount of time than you can or, or whatever it was. It's just their competitiveness in, in everything that they do, everything. So... Um, that's that's probably the biggest thing that they have is that they they just hate giving up a point they hate getting taken down they, they hate even being scored on in any way or getting the upper hand in any certain situation so uh, that's their biggest asset now i'm sure you're picturing it but if, if these guys win and go forward in the challenge game they're, they're gonna have to wrestle each other i mean what would that match be like i mean you've seen them in the workout room but, i mean how do you think that would be for for the fans to watch. And I hope it's not like it when they actually had to wrestle up in Minnesota for third and fourth. Remember that? You guys left early. And then <laughs> 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 the USA Wrestling made you guys wrestle. It was like, okay, you throw me, and then I'll turn you, and then you turn me, and then I'll throw you. And it was it was kind of more like WWE stuff than it was a little wrestling match. And I can't remember who won there, but after that they flipped a coin, and uh, of course were crowned nat dual national champions when they were seniors after winning the Greco national championship. But uh, I just see him, I just see him as nine-year-olds going in there and just beating the crap out of each other and just going nonstop. I'm, I'm sure if it gets heated enough, they'll just go outside afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> a few stories of that too, but. Now, um, just a question about the competition. Obviously, you're one of the local organizers, and you've helped put together all the details and help promote the event. As, as our second year here, what do you feel is the, uh, you know, the buzz about the tournament? Are people excited for us uh, to return here to uh, have the competition at Council Bluffs? And, and uh, you know, why, why should people come out and see this wrestling this weekend? Well, I, I think there's not only Trent and Travis, but we got Travell here, and we got Les Sigmund that's, that's going to be competing against, hopefully, Travell. Um, and, and a lot of other local guys or guys that are just near here, down in Missouri and, and uh, Minnesota. So the, the local, all you wrestlers out there, all you little wrestlers out there, if you, I, I know you probably have your favorite football player, your favorite basketball player, and your favorite what, soccer player or whatever it is, but do you have your favorite wrestler? You guys need to all go out, come to the Mid-America Center, and, and pick up your favorite wrestler. And, and um, pretty soon there's another wrestler that's, that's got some stuff going on, uh, like iPhones and stuff like that. But you could, we're, there's going to be um, more and more wrestling involved, especially in the media uh, and over the Internet. 
and you, you can have your own wrestling team like fantasy wrestling and um, you can follow your own wrestler and be text to you or email to you on you know, every time they do something you'll, you'll have an update on, on what's going on so you guys can follow your wrestlers whoever they are whenever you want to and have an update on them whenever they wrestle so you guys need to get down here and pick one of your favorite wrestlers and, and just watch them and just stick with them and, and do whatever you can with them and try and learn as much and, and have a dream get a dream and, and work towards that dream I think that's that's one of the biggest things that a lot of the wrestlers don't have they don't have that dream right now that those kid wrestlers of, of trying to be the best in the world um, and I think that's pretty much what we need to do this weekend is come down and just pick your favorite wrestler we have any questions for Coach Massey? Okay. I'd also like to introduce um, our other uh, competitor that's going to be wrestling. You're, you're going to wrestle on Saturday, right, Tervel? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Tervel Belognev was um, an NCAA champ for UN, uh, University of Nebraska Kearney uh, a couple of times at the Division II level and uh, obviously you know, was training here uh, during college. Uh, he also, uh, a year ago, when uh, we came to World Team Trials, Turbell was uh, just one of the contenders in our heavyweight division, and, and he'd been training it for a while at the University of Northern Iowa. And uh, this year it's a little different. He comes into the tournament uh, having won the World Team Trials here last year and won a bronze medal at the World Championships, one of our two medalists at the world level. He's also changed where he's training. He's uh, now training in Columbus, Ohio, with the Ohio Regional Training Center. So I want to ask Travell a little bit about some of the, the new things that have been going on for him since we were here a year ago. Travell, uh, could you tell us about how winning the World uh, Bronze Medal has, has helped you as, as a wrestler with your confidence, with your technique, with your training? What was that experience like for you to go up and actually come back from the World Championships with a medal? Um, it, was, it was, you know, really beneficial as far as my world wrestling. I think that um, the biggest things to help me with is perspective and then I guess vision. Um, being able to see myself as a world champion. You know, going into the world uh, world championships last year, I was kind of just, I tried to focus on just beating the guy in front of me. But, um, you know, I, that was the first time at, at that kind of level. You know, I hadn't wrestled a lot of the top guys. I'd wrestled some of them. But I just really, you know, it was hard. It was, you know, I had to really force myself to see myself on top of the podium. Um, but now I can, I, you know, I see it pretty clearly and uh, pretty easily and I, I feel like I have an expectation to win even if I'm going up against a world champion or this. I, I'm not um, trying to squeak out a win. I feel like I expect myself to win and so uh, I feel like that, that's been the biggest benefit. What was it like in a bronze medal match when you won the bout and you knew that you'd reached the goal of a medalist? I mean a lot of people never even had the opportunity and you were, you were there in Denmark and you came home with a medal. Was that a tremendous feeling for you? Um, at the time, it was, I mean, I don't know, I'm sure looking back, hopefully, I mean, the plan is that not to be the highlight of my wrestling career. I mean, I'm planning on winning a lot of, um, a lot more medals and gold ones, hopefully. But uh, at the time, it was it was a little bittersweet just because um, it's, you know, people talk about, you know, being a medalist, being a medalist. When you, when you become a medalist, you kind of look up, you know, the podium and you kind of want the next one up. But uh, I just remember winning the match, and um, it was it was exciting. You know, my mom was there, and you know, a lot of my friends were there. And, <clears throat> um, the match itself was, you know, I, I just wrestled it. I felt like I opened up, and I I went out, scored points, and it was a good match for me. But uh, at the time, I was a little bit frustrated because I wasn't in the finals. But uh, so my feelings during the match were a little different. But I mean, now it's you know, it, it was it was a special time, and obviously, I'll always remember it. No. Since last year, you've moved to Columbus, Ohio, to, to train with the Ohio Regional Training Center and the coaches and athletes there. Could you tell us a little bit about what the new environment's been like for you and, and why you made that decision and how it's working out for you? Um, well, why I made that decision, um, obviously, Tolly Thompson uh, was done wrestling, and then uh, Sean Stender last year in Northern Iowa, where I was training, um, finished after last year. And so I uh, made the change for uh, workout partners, mostly. And uh, Columbus, it's been great. It's uh, everything I could ask for and more. With great workout partners. I have Tommy Rollins, Jay Bergman every day. I have college guys coming in. And uh, Lou Roselli is a great freestyle coach. And 
it's uh, we get the first freestyle specificity that we need day in day out. So it's been a great transition, and I feel like you know I'm getting I feel myself getting better every day there. So it's good. Now we talk a little bit about changes. You recently got married, correct? Good. Uh, how's that been for you now that you're heading forward into trials? Uh, and it's been great. Experience? I I love it. It's the, you know best one of the best decisions ever made. I feel like. Um, the right person uh, helps you in every aspect of your life, and I think that's, you know, I found the right person, and I think that it's helped me, you know, in my wrestling, and, you know, every aspect of my life, it's just uh, brought a lot more joy to my life, so it's been sweet. How often do you find yourself playing with your ring uh, constantly? All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still not used to this. I'm playing with it. How did you guys get married on the same day? No, we did. <laughs> That's a long not story. Not to each other, though. <laughs> <laughs> not my type. <laughs> now, um, at, at the U.S. Open, you ran into an old rival, Les Sigmund, in place second. And uh, don't enter here at the trials as the, as the top guy. But what, what's been going on in your training, and what have you focused on since Cleveland to get ready to come here and, and take the title again? Um, I, I feel like a lot of the things I did in that match were uh, game day mistakes. Um, I don't. I think my preparation was great. I feel like I, I'm having a you know good season. I, I I beat the guy earlier in the year that beat me at the Worlds. You know, I, I'm progressing my wrestling. I just think a lot of the things I made were uh, game day mistakes. Um, I just was, I hadn't had a domestic tournament for a while, and overseas they kind of, the matches come flying at you, so you really don't have time to think. Uh, I think my, I just got, you know, the, the length before the finals, I was walking around, I was doing too many things, I just didn't have my routine locked in like I should have, and uh, it definitely showed, and I mean, I just wasn't, I, I just wasn't prepared, and I mean, Sigma and I, we've been going back and forth, well, it was just fourth for a while in college, but then ever since college we've been going back and forth. Um, so uh, it's you know he's he's a great competitor. I like I love wrestling with him, and the same thing with Tommy. They they will they'll wrestle. They won't you know just shove push big heavyweight guys. They'll wrestle. So uh, I just have to be ready for it. And um, obviously I've my adjustments you know watching tape things like that. I've made my adjustments and now I I feel like but I mean I I feel like I'm I'm just progressing and getting more prepared every tournament and getting better every day. But like I said, I feel like a lot, I was prepared for the tournament. I just think that a lot of the things that I made uh, were just game day mistakes. Does anyone have any questions for Turbell? Is wrestling less, is it almost like balsam versus balsam? Just because he knows what you're going to do and you know what he's going to do. I mean, he's um, got a chess match when he's wrestling. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If, I mean, that might be a comparison. I mean, we, yeah, we. We know what we're each other gonna do. I feel like we just, I mean, you know, it's it's hard to just have a game plan against them. I mean, it's, the game plan's <coughs> been the same. And I'm sure his is too. And we just go out there and wrestle. I think that we, uh, he's a good enough wrestler, and uh, myself included, that we just go out and kind of kind of scrap and like, you know, at the open, he got, you know, he got the last the last move finished, and then, you know, the match before that, I got the last move finished. So it's, you know, it's whoever comes out on top that day and that's I mean obviously that's what I'm training for is to you know be be consistent in winning and but yeah it's you know we we have a history but um, I feel like you you know trying to try to be the guy trying to be a world champ you know you really you just have to learn and take the positives from the history you know so and you're training with Tommy every day now now you guys yeah. you know likely will meet in the challenge yeah. tournament. Yeah uh, like that's that. a, that's another one. Um, and <clears throat> like I said I'm Wrestling with Tommy has been good. I feel like there's some people that that would be tough to train to be, to be in your weight and be training partners with. I feel like, but uh, and obviously there's an element. You know, you wrestle guys so many times. They you know just learn about what you do, how you wrestle. But uh, for the most part, I feel like Tommy and I wrestle each other just to get better. You know, we don't wrestle each other just for scouting. I feel like we just go out and wrestle and um, maybe the best man that day win. And did you work with the Paulsons earlier this year, too? I'm sorry? Did you work with the Paulsons in Iowa earlier this year, too, or did you just sit Yeah, I, I mean, I've been, I, I, I go there to work out. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think you wrestle a lot, though. No, <laughs> I, we, we take a boat. We scrap every now and again. We, uh, they're actually really good. They're actually really good sparring partners, so, you know. So we, uh, we'll spar every now and again.
trips and stuff. So Trent, Trent gets pretty cocky with his, with his chest lock. But <laughs> he thinks I'm going all out. <laughs> were you just, you were at Lincoln then for a camp? Yeah. How long, how long was that camp? Uh, I got here Thursday. I think it started last Monday, but I got here last Thursday. Okay. Do you have any other questions for Travell? Got a few uh, items I'd like to let people know about. I'd first like to thank and, and welcome some special guests. Russ Francis is here. He's a old pro tight end with 49ers and the Patriots, and he's a local guy who's really helping us promote this event and let people know about wrestling and to encourage people to enjoy the weekend and support wrestling. We also have Joel Jacobs, uh, who is an NFL star with the Patriots, who's also here and part of the, the local effort. To get the word out about the World Team Trials and about the sport of wrestling. And they're certainly available if you'd like to chat with them after our, our, our conversation. Um, we, uh, Kathy Fiscus, who's uh, been working with the Council Bluff uh, Organizing Committee, has invited everyone here in the media if they'd like to go over to the Mid-America Center after the press conference and, and see the setup over there. They've got the race platforms ready. and. If that's something that might be uh, something you'd like to do with your, your coverage, that's available. And then also tomorrow at 2 o'clock, uh, we'll have U.S. Open champion Wes Sigman, who is a star here at UNO, uh, won four national titles and is entering the tournament as national champion. He'll be uh, having an, an op a media opportunity over at uh, Scud Catholic High School, along with his college coach, Mike Denny. So if, if you'd like to stop by and visit with him and get some additional coverage uh, from the UNO angle, they'll, they'll be available at uh, Catholic High School at 2 o'clock tomorrow. If you have any questions, see Craig Sask or I about that. But I'd like to thank everyone for coming. And, and uh, at this time, if you want to do some one-on-ones uh, with any of our guests uh, and speak to them with additional questions you might have, please do. And there's uh, still food and beverage on there. And please enjoy. I'm going to have a few of the wings right you know, Gary, now. One other, one other thing, Travell maybe will get a tip tonight about, about Les. He'll be on the Tom Becker show. Les will. And starting at 6 o'clock, he might divulge something. I don't know. <laughs> Are you on that show? Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, Coach, Coach Massey, Massey will also be there. give He's, the local spin on the radio. He and so. Tim Harms are going to uh, uh, chain Les up so he doesn't <laughs> hurt anybody. <laughs> In the, uh, in, the yeah, broad, uh, in the broadcast booth. <laughs> Off the mat is such an avenue. So, in, in any case, we appreciate you being here. I invite you to come out uh, tomorrow to Scott to see Les Sigmund. And then, obviously, both Friday and Saturday, all day long, we'll have great wrestling. Uh, these guys will wrestle Friday. Turbell will be on the mat Saturday. Come on out and uh, cover it. We look forward to having you there. So, thank you very much for uh, coming to our press conference. And we'll see you in a few days.